Thanks again for tuning into Revelations. Our next story comes from Waco, Texas. We're at Baylor University. Uh, joining the American Scientific Affiliation, the ASA is having their 65th conference. And with me is Randy Isaac, the Executive Director for the ASA. Thanks for joining us, Randy. It's great to be here, Chuck. So tell us a little bit about the ASA. Well, the American Scientific Affiliation uh, was organized in 1941. Uh, the ASA, as we call it, uh, is really a fellowship of Christians in science. We seek to bring together a network of, of Christians who are in a scientific vocation. If you think about it, a scientist who goes to church uh, doesn't have that many other scientists to talk to. And a uh, Christian who goes to work in a scientific lab uh, she doesn't have that many other Christians to uh, talk with. So we like to bring people together who share this passion for science, the study of God's creation, uh, and have a love for the Lord. Yeah, so there's a big misconception now in the church that you know, science contradicts faith. There's a prevailing myth in our culture of conflict between science and faith. The terminology has sometimes been used that there's a war between science and faith. And yet, as Christians, we know that God created this world and that inherently there is not a conflict between what he has created and what he has revealed to us through his, his word. That's great. Well, stay tuned as we go behind the scenes and talk about how science and faith really does come together. Stay tuned. People who get involved with the ASA are Christians in fields related to science who really want to know more about the interaction of science and faith. The world needs an organization like the American Scientific Affiliation because the world is confused about issues involving science and religion. And for some people, the confusion creates a great obstacle. It creates a great obstacle to a walk with God, to a deeper understanding of the universe that God has made. One of the great resources of the ASA is the newsletter comes out every other month and it has a great rundown of activities that are coming up, um, conferences and events that you can go to. There's also the Perspectives on Science from Christian Faith, that's the Journal of the American Scientific Affiliation, and that has more scholarly articles which are useful um, in teaching, for learning more in depth about particular issues, and uh, really makes this a community. I think one of the things that's exciting about an organization like ASA is that it provides um, an opportunity for people simply to get together in fellowship to recognize that we're not alone in the fight, if you will, the good fight that the Lord expects us to uh, pursue as his followers on earth, but also then to convey the sense that we are not alone in this en enterprise, especially to our next generation, the students we interact with, the younger colleagues that we can mentor. And I think that in, with the ASA, with its resources, can go ahead and be very relevant and very effective, showing that it is possible to live lives of integrity as Christians and also as scientists, doing the best we can in both areas. The type of students that usually get involved in ASA are people who, who really take an interest in putting together the question of where is there a line between science and faith and should that be explored and want to explore it. Those types of students are usually the ones that get involved with ASA. In the late 1990s I was preparing to teach a course on science and religion and there were very few resources available for evangelicals who both affirm the Bible and affirm the findings of modern science. And the ASA is an organization that involves scientists of, of all disciplines and theologians and Christian philosophers who are dedicated to helping others understand that relationship between science and Christian faith. A lot of pastors don't deal with the issues of science and I think that's partly because they aren't trained in science, although it's very interesting that seminaries now are starting to hire faculty who are involved in science and religion and so people preparing for the ministry will have more opportunities to know about this scientific world that we live in. And we're such a dominantly scientific world that science also tells us new things that we didn't know. It's a great mystery and, and, and in many cases scientists are like detectives. We're trying to form a picture by combining evidence from different directions. We look at things from astronomy, geology, chemistry, biology, and they all tell in different ways 
the same story about the, the history and the way of, of our universe and the way things work and to be able to acknowledge when we still have things we really need to puzzle out and learn. And I think science in that sense is a great gift from God to help us learn the details of creation. What I like most about the ASA is the variety of people I meet in the ASA from across all disciplines. It's intergenerational. Well, I think that an important message that ASA has to provide to, to others, and especially in the church, is that faith and science do not need to be in conflict, that the Bible allows for science and faith to be in harmony. What I find so exciting about our annual meeting and about perspectives in science and Christian faith, which is our uh, quarterly uh, uh, periodical that comes out, is that it provides tremendously rich resources to help me in my understanding, to enlarge my vision, and to really uh, uh, encourage me to move out in these different areas as a person of faith and science. The mission of the ASA is primarily to be a focus of dialogue and, and discussion. We aim to review and disseminate materials about science and about science and faith. We give our members an opportunity to share their own ideas. We give them an opportunity to have access to resources that they can use in their own lives. And above all, we now have a thriving website, which is rich in resources on the whole spectrum of disciplines of, of science and how it relates to Christian faith. Today, native missionaries are the fastest, most efficient and economical means of sending the gospel to unreached and unevangelized people groups. Advancing Native Missions is a mission board that serves as a bridge between the body of Christ in North America and native missions in other parts of the world. ANM to hasten the second coming of the Lord Jesus by providing prayer and material support to native missions on the front lines of world evangelization. Matthew 24 verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Worship leaders, choir members, church musicians, are you looking for quality music charts, video and audio accompaniment? Do you want to honor God by serving the poor? Your church can have, free of charge, professional music charts, choral arrangements, video and audio accompaniment that demonstrates how God's people are serving the poorest of the poor. Join a worldwide movement of mercy. Go online to harmonyofhearts.org. Click on music videos. I came to Ethiopia in response to a headline I saw on an internet news story. It said, 14 million Ethiopians at risk of death by starvation. What we do is we do a rapid assessment method where we measure the middle upper arm. It's called the muak. And if they're 12 centimeters or smaller in diameter, they're considered by UN standards and World Health Organization standards to be severely malnourished. Mother's all right. Well, no. She's only 20 centimeters. That's, she's not okay. She's bad. See, she can't feed her baby. If you can't feed the mother, the mother can't feed the baby. So what we do is we give enough special food. It's a special mixed food called Famix. It's designed for malnourished children. And then the rest of their family, we give them wheat and oil. That way we feed the whole family. The mother starts getting healthy. She's able to start producing milk. She can start back to basically breastfeeding her child again. So it's kind of a win-win-win circle all the way around by taking that.